Und ähm, unsere letzte Speakerin heute ist Sabrina Kirain. Sie ist Assistenzprofessorin an der WU Wien ähm, und beschäftigt sich sehr viel mit äh, den Themen äh, Privacy und auch Urheberrecht. Ähm, dort an der Uni hat sie ein FFG-Projekt äh, seit ungefähr sechs Monaten, das über zwei Jahre laufen wird. Und äh, davon berichtet sie heute. Das ist äh, DALIC, ähm, Data License Clearance Center, ähm, das sich sehr viel mit Urheberrecht auseinandersetzt, vor, vor allem eben auch bei komplexen Urheberrechten wie Datensätze und so weiter. Um, wir freuen uns, dass du da bist. Um, it's uh, maybe the first or the second talk that we have at a Netzpolitischer Abend that is in English. Um, so we are happy to have you here. And uh, yeah, you're from Ireland. No? That, yes. That's why uh, we are speaking English now. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. So yes, uh, I think this will go a lot easier if I speak English because I've only been here a year and a half and unfortunately I can understand a little but I, I uh, struggle to present. So what I'm going to present to you today is the Dalek project. Um, but I need to bring up my slides. Now you've seen all my slides. <laughs> okay, cool. So um, the Dalek project is about licenses. Uh, but when you talk about licenses, licenses can mean different things to different people. So a lot of people talk about policies in general and they call them licenses. So here we're really talking about copyright. So it goes really well with what Clara was talking about earlier and actually, you know, exposing all of this data. So what is copyright? Well, essentially it's giving others the right to use your work. So it's either to use the work or distribute the work or to derive works based on something you've done yourself. So essentially, when it came to looking up copyright, obviously copyright can mean different things and it certainly means something different here in Austria. So when we talk to our legal partners, they say, look, there is no direct translation for what you call copyright. So Already we're struggling to actually look at copyright in, at an international level rather than just at a national level. But I was interested in, in Wikipedia because obviously this is a collaborative environment. So who owns the right to this data? And essentially each page is licensed by the person who created the page originally. And normally it's CC by share alike. But when it comes to the individual items on the page, so if you have an image on that page or if you have some data on that page, that can have its own license. So therefore, you know, you have to actually consult that if you want to reuse it. So I'm going to ask a question. Does anybody have a, a Cody box? No? Okay. Ah, yeah. Me and the guy down the back, nice. <laughs> so essentially, uh, a Kodi box, it, it's used for, for streaming. And if you want to stream to your TV, you can buy this little box. It's, it's relatively cheap and uh, now it's a little bit controversial. So this article is actually from a couple of days ago. And essentially, it's about the Kodi box in general and the software that's actually put on this Kodi box. Because the, the box, it, it's not the problem. The problem is if you actually have pirated software, if you have pirated movies, and you're streaming these. But that's okay, because it's only downloads. You know, streaming is a gray area. So if you're streaming, it's all right, but you shouldn't download without actually having the, the, uh, the license to do so. Well, according, according to the European Court of Justice, very recently, streaming is also illegal if you don't have permission to do so. So essentially, the UK, they've come up with the new Digital Economy Act. And essentially what they've done is they have made it much stricter. So now, if I was in the UK and I had my box, and obviously I wouldn't stream anything illegally, but 
it, let's say I was streaming something illegally, essentially I could go to prison for 10 years. It makes you think. They say in the articles, oh, by the way, the Sun mightn't be a very reputable source, but the Independent is, is much better. But uh, essentially, they say in the articles, if they're going to target people, they're not actually going to target individuals. But at the same time, the legislation allows them to do so. So there's no guarantee. If you're an individual and you're living in the UK, really, you shouldn't be using it. But it won't affect me because, you know, what would I be doing illegally? I certainly wouldn't download images and use them in my presentations. Obviously, I would always look to make sure that it's labeled for reuse. I definitely wouldn't use code and code snippets. No, I, I always check the licenses for those. And when it comes to data, I definitely check the license for the data before I reuse any of it. Because uh, obviously, as a software engineer, I know all of these legal things. Or maybe I don't. So this is where Dalek comes in. And essentially, if I actually have to go there and read all the licenses and determine whether those licenses are actually compatible, can I actually put them together? If I want to publish the whole presentation, what license do I give the presentation? This is going to take me time. And I give presentations quite regularly. So it's going to take me a lot of time because every time I want to reuse something, I'm going to have to check it. So essentially, this slide is, is basically giving you an overview. An overview of the license spectrum. So down the bottom here, we, we go from the public domain, which is no rights reserved, all the way to all rights reserved. So if you publish something and you have this data set and i'm a researcher so i like to publish data and if i publish it without a license well i'm using the internet so so surely it's public and everybody can reuse it no if you publish it without a license it means all rights reserved and nobody can use it so essentially it's like saying hey look at my research but you can't touch it so this isn't a good thing for researchers but it's the same let's say i want to um develop a new application and I want to use some data and maybe I want to use some information from Wikipedia, uh, IMDB, maybe I'm interested in some geolocation data and I want to combine all of this. What am I going to do in terms of licenses? Well, just here we're talking about ODBL, CC BY, CP, CC BY, share alike, IMDB license, uh, TomTom -tom license, like really, I. I don't know those. And actually, if you've read any of the legal licenses, it, it's quite hard to interpret them. You know, you have to spend a lot of time going through them. Um, and there's many, many more licenses than these ones here. This is just a sample. So in the Dalek project, what we would like to do is we would like to generate a license library. And the license library will actually contain as many licenses as we can model but we will model them in a machine readable format because the overall aim is to develop an application that can do all of this reasoning for us. So the first thing is the license library, but maybe I want to create my own license. And according to our legal partners, this is perfectly fine. You can give it whatever license you want, but maybe I actually want to look at all of the derivative work and I want to basically make sure I am, am adhering to all those licenses and then I want to put my own conditions on it and I want to adhere to everything. Well then I'm going to actually have to do some sort of reasoning and maybe I'm going to need the negotiator and the negotiator is doing all of this checking for me. Um, and the one that I haven't spoken about is the license annotator. And essentially the license annotator is the one that will give us the licenses in the machine readable format. So just to give you an overview of what the objectives of the project are. So the project started just uh, six months ago and we're currently at the formal semantics and the rights expression, expression languages. And we're essentially analyzing the different licenses and we're trying to put them into a machine readable format. So we researchers started the exercise and we quickly discovered that we couldn't complete the exercise because we were interpreting legislation. And I don't think my software degree gives me 
this uh, right to interpret the legislation. So therefore, we consulted the legal people. And the legal people are also going through these licenses. But it takes time. It takes time to model them because what vocabulary are we going to use? Well, we have ODRL, Open Digital Rights Language. I mean, this is exactly what we need. But when it comes to actually looking at ODRL, ODRL is a high level language. So yes, it can be used to express permissions, prohibitions, uh, obligations, dispensations. And you know that you can have those rules and you know you can have duties associated with the rules, but that's as far as it goes. It, it doesn't go into the level of detail that we require. So therefore we have to do all of this modeling ourselves. Unfortunately, machines can't help us here because we actually need to interpret the legislation and to uh, formally represent it. So we're going to represent the licenses using RDF, the Resource Description Framework. And the reason why we're representing them using RDF is so that we can have a formal semantics behind them and that it will facilitate this negotiation and this analysis over the licenses. Uh, we will contribute to the W3C Permissions and Obligations Expression Group. So both myself and Simon Stayskal are part of the group and we're feeding back what we're discovering along the way in the project to the other team members so that we can try and standardize this. Because what we would like to do is we would like to give back to the community. And it's one of the points that comes later. So for the rule engine, essentially, we are going to reason over those, those licenses. The things that we're looking at at the moment is to calculate the similarity, um, to detect conflicts, to point to the conflicts, but we may actually not be able to make a decision. So it, it may be a case of highlighting that there is a conflict here, but us not deciding which one takes pref preference because it may not be possible. So that component may have to be removed and another component may have to be slotted in in its place. So this is the hints to the conflict resolution. Um, in terms of software, what we will do is we will provide an API. So essentially it will be Dalek as a service and you can consult Dalek. So what you can do is you can say, okay, I'm, I'm developing this piece of software and I'm reusing these libraries and here's the license associated with each of them. And you can feed it into Dalek. If we don't have it in our library, we will translate it and we will be able to come back with some feedback as to the compatibility of the various licenses that you want to use in your derivative work. Along with this, uh, we want to have some endpoints and we're looking at maybe working with Clara by the looks of things on open data and how we actually make sure that we can combine the open data and the licenses. Because what we're trying to do is to ensure that the data that is publicly available on the, on the net can be actually used. Because I think there are many people like, like myself that was very naive and I just thought, well, it's public. So therefore I can use it, I, I have the right. But uh, it appears that the sanctions are getting tougher. I wouldn't like to be in the UK, but based on the European court ruling, it looks like all of the countries will face similar issues, whether they prosecute or not, who knows? But uh, I think Dalek will be very valuable. So if you wanna know more about the project, please check out our website. Please contact Tosillo or myself. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Sabrina. Are there questions? So as I uh, understood, uh, your main target group or your aim is uh, that uh, um, for derivative works, uh, you just feed it in and then uh, get an output uh, for uh, <clears throat> a new license that, uh, I don't know, uh, offers a certain form of access or just uh, as I like. So it's, it, 
It's a combination, so it will probably be semi-automated. I can't imagine that it, it's it's going to be something that's completely automated. But if essentially you have four or five licenses and we have them in our system and you're asking, are these licenses compatible? The system will come back and tell you yes, and it will tell you what the overall license should be. Of course, you will then have the opportunity to refine that license or change that license. Uh, one comment to that, so um, what we just discussed prior to the talk was basically that um, to my understanding or to what, whenever several people I asked, um, the the meaning of of some license terms, for instance, from Creative Commons um, based applied on data or on data being shared through APIs and so on, isn't at all even clear to us, for instance, what certain obligations mean, how they how they can be properly fulfilled. For instance, if you have a share, um, an attribution license over an API, what do you do? What do you do with combined work um, from data through the different licenses? So I'd be happy to discuss this maybe afterwards a bit more. But even besides that, Axel, the, the attribution itself, attribution in different licenses means different things. So before we even get to the st that stage, you have to figure out what does attribution mean? What is the exact semantics of attribution in a particular license? And how does it differ across them? And it's not just one term, it's many, many terms that we've discovered that there are these subtle differences. And essentially, what we're doing is we're modeling the legal process because the lawyers do the the intellectual property rights lawyers they do this as a process as it is but it's it's a painful process and it takes quite a lot of time so they are really really key to our project in the sense that it's their background knowledge that we're actually going to use to try and automate as much as we can So as I understand, it's uh, concerning Austrian law. We will focus on Austrian law for, for now, but the goal of the project is to have it at a European level. And this through standardization like Creative Commons or? So the standardization that we're, the, the group we're involved in is the W3C, but yes, uh, the Creative Commons comes in there as well, yeah. But it, it can mean different things in different countries. So different. It, it's a very difficult. We start with Austria. We see how we yeah. get on. I mean, it means yeah. uh, a European level, 28 jurisdictions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah, but we would scale it. Uh, you know, you would start with Austria and then see how you go. Ireland would be next. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I got a question concerning the reliability of the system that you're planning to provide. Um, if a customer is using the Dalek system and the Dalek system provides him with a wrong answer concerning, you know, what I can do with certain information, do you want to make that system legally bulletproof or is there some... No, we don't. Okay. We do the same as the lawyers. They actually put a clause on the end of any advice that they give yes. and they basically say, look, you cannot sue us if this is not accurate. So uh, this is what they do in practice. Yeah. But 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 with a lawyer, you still got you know you got a person looking through the you you got someone to blame <laughs> obviously yeah. um, here you 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 have a some kind of machine readable system that will provide you with an answer and you won't be able to rely on that answer is, is that the the idea it it would be good to have. Um, uh, traceability in terms of why the the machine made the decision that it, it made. So essentially it shouldn't be a, yes, this is fine, or please use this one. It, it should actually have uh, all the information that you need to check how good it is. But we will try and make it as bulletproof as possible, but I have to be realistic as well, because you, kn you asked the question because you knew the answer more than likely, yeah. Okay, are there any other questions? And thank you again. I, okay. I, I really hope that you're very successful because I think it's uh, uh, very uh, um, that this is necessary that we that we have something like this in the future. So good luck. <laughs> thank you. Vielen lieben Dank also an die drei Speakerinnen.